Well, that's the thing though. When we compare our own righteousness to that, or really our lack of righteousness, when we compare our lack of righteousness to that, well, that just goes to show how great the need of forgiveness is in all of us. I think if we're all honest, the debt that we owe to our king is 150,000 years worth of labor. <laughs> Just saying. Um, I think when you add up all your unrighteousness at the end of your life, one small thing here and there and there, every day it adds up. And you know, as I read this passage and I was studying for this, I thought to myself, I was like, man, like, in comparison for the amount that we sin against God. You know, and I, and I want to throw this in here. I've had this thought for a long time about how to abuse God. And, you know, honestly, it's, it's I think that's impossible <laughs> to abuse God. Because uh, He is God. He is Lord of all heaven and earth. Um, I hope that the wind isn't putting too much extra sound effect on this thing. Um, so bear with us here. <laughs> the wind will stop here in a minute. Um, where was I? Anyway, the point that I'm getting at here is that we, in comparison, when we look at the amount of sin that we've committed against the Most High, the Most High God, and all of our lives, versus the instances where someone has done us wrong. We have done him, that's what it was. To me, that is how you can abuse God as, as a human being. Number one, you disobey him. Because he's created us, he's created everything that we enjoy. This, this wind, this sun, everything, the material that our clothes are made of, uh, the food that makes us uh, pretty hefty. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, man? Um, <laughs> put a put a uh, amen or a yeah, I hear you in the comments below if you know what I'm talking about when it comes to heftiness. <laughs> man, something happens after you turn 30, I'm telling you. Uh, it really does. <laughs> Ten years ago, I thought there wasn't nothing to that, but yeah, I found out. Um, now there is something to that. So <laughs> anyway, let me get back on track here. You can, you abuse God by disobeying him, being ungrateful for everything he's done for us, being ungrateful for, for his rules and his regulations. Because let me tell you something, his rules and regulations aren't to make us uncomfortable. His rules and regulations, men, are to, <laughs> if, if you actually read through this book, okay, if you actually read through this, it's not to hurt us. His rules are actually there to protect us. And y'all, I'm going to tell you right now, we as men, we need a king. We need a king. We cannot look at ourselves as gods or kings. We just can't. Um, we need a standard. We need rules to uphold and to live by and to teach to our families come on man you know what i'm talking about now we not we don't like it at times to have to have rules and regulations but it is necessary and we need a king we need someone to honor to revere to defend to defend if you love defending the lord jesus christ put an amen in the comments below we're going to have our own amen corner on Blue Collar Bible Man. <laughs> uh, with, this is Blue Collar Bible Man. I know I'm late in the video uh, stating that, but this is Blue Collar Bible Man, and we're trying to protect you guys with God's shield of faith. And we're trying to put the sword of the Lord, which is his word of God, we're trying to put the sword of the Lord into your hands and teach you how to use it. Um... So, let's go back to the text here. I kind of went on a little rabbit trail there for the last 10 minutes. And back to our text, verse 32, 
Summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? Now, let me go to Mark chapter 11, verse 25 here. Just to read this real quick. And Jesus is uh, standing... Um, telling his disciples something here and verse 25 he says whenever you stand praying forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father who is in heaven will forgive you your transgressions which is very interesting if we are harboring bitterness and grudges in our heart then, and we go to for God for forgiveness, he's going to see that. He judges us by our hearts, y'all. And he does judge us. And his Lord moved with anger, speaking of the king and the slave here, the unrighteous slave. And his Lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. To illustrate verse 35 right there, I want to go back to Zechariah and the Old Testament, chapter 7. Uh, verses 8 through 12 is what we're going to read here. Then the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Thus has the Lord of hosts said dispense true justice and practice kindness and compassion each to his brother and do not oppress the widow or the orphan the stranger or the poor and do not devise evil in your hearts against one another but they refused to pay attention and turned a stubborn shoulder and stopped their ears from hearing they made their hearts like flint so that they could not hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets and therefore great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. Now the parallel that I want to really get into here between our main text in Matthew 18 and Zechariah uh, chapter 7 is this passage here is, you know, it's talking about dispense true justice, practice kindness, and compassion each to his brother. Love your neighbor as yourself. This parallels with the parable that Jesus was saying in Matthew 18. The whole thing of him not forgiving his fellow slave for the measly amount that he owed. This is the same thing here. That's, that, that unrighteous slave, his heart had become like flint. If you know what flint is, flint is pretty daggone hard. You can start fires with flint. So that they could not hear the law. Now look, that's very crucial. Did God make that fellow slave, that slaves, that unrighteous slave, did, did God make his heart hard or did that slave make his heart hard? And notice he did it after he had received forgiveness. Selfishness. Wanting forgiveness for our own selves, but denying it to others. Self-righteousness. And that is what that uh, unrighteous slave was. And so, since they would not hear the law, this slave is not operating by the law of righteousness. And the words which the Lord of hosts sent by his spirit through the former uh, prophets. Guys, at the time of Christ, there had been 400 years since the last inspired prophet between Malachi and Matthew. And everything had been written down. Everything had been, uh, the scribes had recorded everything. Uh... At that point, you know, the, the, Old, the Old Testament scriptures have been translated into Greek even. So, at that, you know, when Jesus is saying this, everyone has access.